The Toronto Blue Jays have seemingly shifted their focus to trading for an outfielder and potentially grabbing another left-handed reliever. Should Toronto look to add another rotation piece, or is it good enough to compete in the AL East? We'll break that down on this episode of Jays Digest. What's up, Jays fans? I'm your host, Peter Brionis, alongside host Nick Goss. Now, before we get into anything today, first, I want to thank you all for the support. That's first and foremost. But the World Cup has just ended at the time of this recording. It was an unbelievable final between France and Argentina. Congratulations to Lionel Messi for winning his first World Cup. That was one of the greatest matches I've ever seen in my entire life. And uh, we'll talk some baseball, but that was just unbelievable. Yeah, it was. And like you said, the support has also been unbelievable. We're close to 5K. I don't know if we'll get there before Christmas, but, you know, hopefully we will. And just keep hitting the subscribe button for daily content. But let's get into the first topic of the video and the main topic, which is a Blue Jays catcher trade update. So a report surfaced uh, yesterday and the day before. We have a few screenshots here today. And it is um, hot stove rumbling saying the Blue Jays were open to trading catcher Danny Jansen for a starting pitcher prior to signing Chris Bassett. But now that's not a certainty. Toronto could carry Jansen, Moreno, Kirk on the roster, giving Kirk a number of at-bats at DH. And Moreno can start the season at AAA if the Jays don't find a deal uh, to their liking. So what are your thoughts on the on the fact that they were open to trading for a starting pitcher, but now they're not that they uh, signed Chris Bassett? Well, I think their rotation's pretty good right now, but I still would like to add another fifth starter. I'd, top four is great. All a bunch of reliable workhorses that'll eat up a ton of innings for you, so that's what you need. But the fifth spot is up in the air. Do we really have confidence in Mitch White and Yusek Kuchi to power us through a 162-game season? I don't. I don't know about you, Nick, but it's not something that I want to take a chance with. And that last part of that quote there, Sending Gabriel Moreno down to AAA, I hate every part of that. I I don't want anything to do with that. I'm I'm sorry. I'm stopping that right there. He's bet he better stay in the major leagues. Yeah, I agree. I don't want to see him in AAA. He's been there long enough, and he was up last year, and he showed he can compete. But uh, there's another screenshot here saying, in any event, Toronto's in a strong negotiation uh, negotiation position as there are a few paths that could go down. Obviously, Contreras, Vasquez, Murphy are all off the board, but cycling players the DH spot or option Moreno. Uh, tended to begin the year like you said we don't want to do that from a Blue Jays perspective but I mean there is a chance and then this is an interesting note so the Jays were finalists for uh, Masataka Yoshida who was basically a DH before the Red Sox got him so the Blue Jays were finalists on him meaning that if Heyman is telling the truth about the Jays being finalists they're definitely still trying to add a bat as Yoshida is basically a DH so maybe the Jays are still going to add a left-handed DH slash outfielder Michael Brantley is kind of the player that fits that bill. So what are your, uh, I don't know, what are your thoughts on that? We were finalists for uh, the guy that the Red Sox got after. Yeah, Yoshida's not a great outfielder. That That's what I've been hearing a lot about him uh, in his time in Japan. Kind of a below average defender, but yeah. the guy can hit. And he's got a beautiful swing, doesn't strike out, has a great eye. Just an all-around complete hitter in the outfield. Left-handed, too. So that would have been the perfect add. The Red Sox gave him a ton of money, though, like $75 million. For a guy that's never played a single inning in the major leagues, it's, it's a lot of dough. It's a lot of dough. So uh, I think uh, I think they might be heading in that direction. Like you said, Michael Brantley is kind of a similar type of player. You don't really trust him in the outfield, but man, can he hit. So I, I still think they need like a pure hitter, a left-handed pure hitter, because Kevin Kiermaier doesn't really help in diversifying the lineup. Yes, he's a lefty, but is he much of a threat? Like, I I don't think so. So, yes, I'd like to add another lefty bat first option. Yeah, and I don't know. The conversation has been brought up the whole year. Who do we trade between the three uh, catchers? And it seems like they were shopping Danny Jansen for a starting pitcher beforehand, which, honestly, I'm perfectly okay with. If we could have traded Danny Jansen for a solid three, four, or five starter, obviously preferably three or four, then that would have been great. But now if you're shifting to the outfield spot, and they guaranteed did, uh, Kevin Kiermaier, you know, the starting job. Who are you really going to get for Danny Jansen at this point by a trade? I don't know. I don't know if you have any uh, thoughts on that. But signing an outfielder seems like the best bet at this point of the uh, of the offseason. I don't know who, what other teams need a catcher at this point. Because pretty much every team that did need one went out and got one, either on the trade market or, uh, or on the free agent market. So, uh, yes, you control the catching monopoly at this point. But... Who's in desperate need of Danny Jansen right now? I, I can't really name any teams off the top of my head. And uh, even if they were interested in Danny Jansen, would they be able to give us a piece that'll 
kind of fit our bill as well. So that that's something to monitor. But I, I do think you need to try to get whatever you can for, for Danny Jansen. And you can't open the season with three catchers because there's still a couple of other spots that need to be filled in your roster. Yeah, um, Diamondbacks are one of the, the only teams I can think of now. I've seen some more talk about Jake McCarthy at this point, which would still make sense, a lot of upside, and people were kind of saying, you know, use uh, trade for Jake McCarthy and have him kind of develop behind Kevin Kiermeyer uh, for this year, because obviously Kiermeyer is only on a one-year like deal, that. and then have him come up next year and be our future center fielder, which could be a very interesting idea, and we might have another video uh, in the future is breaking down what we think about our outfielders mm-hmm. and that whole situation, because we go into a whole... Uh, Whole wormhole of that, but let's, we'll we'll see. And we'll see what happens, and let's get into the second. Yeah, topic. another. Oh, you, go ahead. Go yeah, ahead. yeah, yeah. Just another thing about yeah. uh, Jake McCarthy. Um, he, if we do bring him here, he is our center fielder of the future because yeah. the Jays don't have any very high end prospects uh, in the outfield. So uh, it would they would have to go get a young guy via trade and and really kind of mold him into the team, but. Yeah, no, you can't really rely on your pipeline because there's nothing really there. So I think you got to go trade for a guy because if Kevin Kiermaier pops off and, and he wants a, a big contract next offseason, are you really going to give that to a 33, 34 year old? I, I don't think so. So, no. Uh, yeah, you got to, I think you should trade for a guy, not necessarily for this year, but definitely for the future as yeah. well, like you said. I like that idea a lot. And again, we might have a full video on that, but let's uh, fully get in. You guys probably saw a sneak peek. I jumped the gun a bit, but Jays are pursuing a lefty reliever. This report came out a few days ago, and uh, we're getting to cover it now a little bit. So this is from Thomas Hall. He's a Jays writer, and he said, hearing the Blue Jays would ideally prefer to add another left-handed pitcher to the bullpen joining Tim Meza, Taylor Rogers, and Andrew Chafin would be the most obvious targets. Now, this was on December 14th, which is four days ago as of recording, and both of those free agents are still available, and I would love either one of them. Chafin is probably my preference, but Taylor Rogers has had you know some phenomenal elite seasons, so I don't know if you have a preference there or any other players that you could maybe get, maybe we try to catch her for one of a, a lefty relief pitcher as well. Could be an option. Chafin is steady and you know what you're getting out of him, but he's got a, he's got a ceiling and it's not very high. Whereas Taylor Rogers, he's been a huge strikeout guy in the past. Uh, he's had a couple of all-star seasons as well. So that uh, I think ceiling wise, you go for Taylor Rogers, but uh, he, he is prone to giving up home runs and, uh, and he has struggled a little bit in the past year or two. So I I think I'm I might lean towards Chafin, but I would not be mad if the Jays went out and got Taylor Rogers either. Yeah, I think Chafin seems like more of a Ross Atkins player to uh, to go for. You know, we're gonna get yeah. from Andrew Chafin. Obviously, Taylor Rogers has the potential to be absolutely elite, and maybe you know Tim Aza. I would prefer to have someone a bit better, maybe as our main lefty reliever. Um, obviously, Tim Mays has been phenomenal. He just, uh, I don't know, maybe a sour taste in my mouth from the wild card game and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. But I don't know. The fact we're pursuing for a lefty reliever is definitely good. Yeah, let, let me throw this at you, Nick. What about Ricky Tiedemann late in the season coming out of the bullpen? How yeah, if that? He, it could be an interesting, especially if we have five. Maybe we trade for a starter at the deadline and then Tiedemann comes up and get him some you know, major league experience in September. He could definitely throw him in the bullpen, see how he does. That's usually, that's what the path used to be and kind of still is for most uh, most prospects, but we kind of just threw Manoa in the fire and it works. So yeah. maybe, he's I don't, still I don't He's that. still on an innings limit though. So uh, Ricky Tiedemann, I, I don't know if it applies for this year, but I don't think he exceeded like 110 yeah, innings no, last did. year. It was like Maybe not even 100. Yeah, it was like 75. Yeah, exactly. So, so yeah. So that if I don't think they're gonna let him throw 200 innings in the minor leagues this year, that that would be stupid to do if you're the Toronto Blue Jays. So, I I wouldn't be surprised if they bring him up mid season or or maybe as a September call up. And if he pitches well, he could be a part of the postseason roster. Who knows? But I'm not. Uh, not holding my breath for that though yeah maybe they bring him up i'm not either maybe they bring him up in september or earlier he dominates and then uh makes a uh, makes a push in the playoffs and i guess speaking on ricky tiedemann tiedemann is ranked the fourth best pitching prospect in the mlb so i'll pop this up right now you can look at the other prospects that go alongside him andrew painter grace Rodriguez, euro perez or yuri perez and ricky tiedemann with an eta of 2023 well, this is some big praise out of Tiedemann. It seems like he just kind of came out of nowhere, and there's something else here. So named, he's also named the club's top minor leaguer. Named the Blue Jays 2022 Minor League Player of the Year by Baseball America after putting up a 2.17 ERA and 117-29 to 29K per walk ratio over 18 starts. Pitched a mere 78.2 innings. He's been dominant in every level he's pitched in. He's a lefty. He throws gas. 
he he's everything you want out of a out of a prospect. Yeah, especially for a fourth round pick. I mean, the guy has just exceeded expectations. He's a lefty that can pump 96, 97. I I don't know. Um, I was on the train of trading him, uh, you know, for for a proven center fielder, for a superstar center fielder. Uh, I think I would still do it. You might regret it in the future, but you're trying to win right now. But he looks like, uh, by all accounts, he's going to be a special pitcher. And I can't wait till he's ready to come up to the major leagues if we do hold on to him. Yeah, he's super exciting. I think, you know, after the Manoa thing, people have people might have too high expectations for him when he comes up. I'm a bit worried about that. But, I mean, he seems, by all accounts, he's ready to, you know, he's going to be ready to pitch and hopefully be, uh, you know, an impact player for us next year. But that'll wrap up the video. And, you know, the only player I would trade Tiedemann for is probably Brian Reynolds, like, you, like we've talked about. And it doesn't seem like he's going to be traded, but... Yeah, I don't know. Very interesting. I love Tiedemann. And let us know in the comment section below if you would trade Ricky Tiedemann for any player in the MLB, who would it be? Obviously, keep it within the realm of possibility. But that'll wrap up the video. We'll see you guys tomorrow. Have a good one. Thanks.